Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Sally. Uh, this is just a quick short lesson um, in between the two week main lessons. And let's get into it. So we're still on ecology. And today we will reintroduce myself and some details about the club. Um, do a little bit review of the last lesson, if you remember. And then today we'll learn about food chains and food webs. Okay, so just a reintroduction. Uh, my name is William Fu. Um, and then some notes is that you can always go to my YouTube channel and you can search up Will William Fu Sally into the search bar on YouTube. And then my video will be the first video that pops up. And remember, you can find all the previous lessons there um, and make sure to subscribe so you'll be notified when I post new videos like this short video. Um, and I'll be posting more of these kind of short videos in between the two week main lessons. Um, yeah, and uh, just keep in mind that science is all about exploring and learning and improving. So don't worry if you need to rewatch um, the previous lessons if you got confused or if you have questions. And if you have a question, you can comment on my YouTube videos or contact me if you have questions. Okay. So last time we learned about what ecology is, symbiotic relationships, and the three types of symbiotic relationships. Now take some time, just do some mental refreshing and see if you remember um, the answers to these questions. Okay, moving on. So if you remember last time, we learned that ecology is the study of interactions between organisms with one another and their environment. So it's how your favorite plants and animals are connected with one another. And then we also learned about symbiotic relationships. And these three types were commensalism with sharks and remora, for example, mutualism with bees and flowers, parasitism like mosquitoes and humans, and then it's not on the slide, but also predation, um, such as a lion and a gazelle. And try to remember what these things are. Remember, commensalism is where one organism benefits and the other is not affected. Mutualism, where both organisms are benefited. Parasitism, where one organism is harmed and the other one benefits. And then predation is where one organism is killed and the other benefits. Okay, so talking about today's topic, food webs and food chains. So in order to get a basic understanding of why we even talk about food webs and food chains, we need to first talk about energy. So just imagine you're uh, outside playing. It's a long summer day. It's very bright outside. It's very hot. And you do a lot of running around. So, you know, eventually you run up energy. You get tired. And when you feel tired and out of energy, how do you recharge your energy? And you do this by eating food. Now, plants and animals are the same, but where do plants and animals get their food and energy from? And how does energy flow through an ecosystem? Well, food chains and food webs can answer this question and can answer what exactly is the flow of energy in an ecosystem? So first, we'll talk about food chains. So what are food chains? So remember, in science is all about definitions first. So a food chain is a cycle of energy flow through plants, animals, fungi, bacteria, and all living things. So as you can see, here's a little preview of a food chain. And notice how it's circular and it's a flow. Okay. So let's see the flow of energy in this particular food chain. So remember, food chains are all about the flow of energy. So first of all, where does all the energy on Earth come from? All the energy comes first from the sun. It's the sun's light and warmth that drives all lives. Plants then are able to make their own food from sunlight called through a process called photosynthesis by using the energy from the sun and water and other nutrients from the soil. So the energy first, all, all the energy comes from the sun first, and then the plants are the next step and they make their own food from the sun's energy. And then after the plants, 
uh, the flow of energy, all the energy that's stored in these plants, all the energy is converted um, in, uh, and flow in the next step with deers. And deers eat the plants and get the energy stored in the plants. So deers are herbivores. Remember, herbivores mean plant eaters. They eat plants. So deers are herbivores. So they get their energy from the plants and the energy that's stored in the plants, uh, tissues, and fibers. And then next, lions are carnivores or meat eaters. They get their energy from eating other animals. So in this food chain, the lion eats the deer to get the energy stored in the deer. And the deer got the energy from the energy stored in the plants. And the plants got its energy from the sun. So it's all a flow of energy. And then next, when plants, deer, and lions die, they're all broken down by decomposers, such as worms, insects, fungi, and bacteria. These decomposers get energy from decomposing these dead organisms or breaking down the tissues of these dead organisms. So when these decomposers break down a dead organism, it provides important nutrients in the soil that allow plants to grow and then the cycle continues. So remember, energy just flows through the system, okay? It's always conserved. So how is energy stored in plants and animals? Well, energy is a very general term. Energy is stored in all our flesh. When we eat food, our digestive system, our stomach, and all its enzymes and acids chemically break down the food to convert it back into pure energy, which we use and also store in our body. So when, um, when all this energy is stored in a plant and a deer eats the plant, it can get the energy that's stored in the plant's tissues. Okay, but that's not it. We got some other fancy terminology, which is basically just what things are called in science, these scientific names for things. So there's special names for each member of the food chain. The first organism, plants, are producers because they produce their own energy from the sun through photosynthesis. The organism that eats the plants, are or the producers, are called primary consumers because they're consuming the plants, but they don't make their own energy like producers and plants. The organism that eats the primary consumer is the secondary consumer. The tertiary consumer eats the secondary consumer. And then decomposers are the worms, bugs, fungi, and bacteria that break down dead organisms. So as you can see, this plant is a producer because it produces its own energy from the sun's light and warmth. And then the primary consumer eats the producer. So this mouse is the primary consumer. And then the snake eats the mouse. So the snake is the secondary consumer and so on and so on. Okay, so now what are the producers, primary consumers, secondary consumers, and decomposers in this food chain? So remember, producer is producing its own energy. So which organism gets its energy from the sun or produces its own energy? And then what's the primary consumer? What eats the producer? And then what's the secondary consumer? What eats the primary consumer? And then what's the decomposer? What breaks down the dead organisms? So take some time, pause the video um, to try to think through these answers yourself. Okay, and then the answers are the producer are the plants because they make their own energy through photosynthesis. The primary consumer are the deer because they eat the producers. And then the secondary consumer eats the prime, secondary, the primary, sorry, the secondary consumer eats the primary consumer. So the lion is the secondary consumer. And then the decomposers are the fungi in the picture, which are these mushrooms that decompose the dead body of this lion. And remember, these decomposers, once they break down the dead body of the lion, it makes it, uh, it turns it into nutrients that are stored in the soil that in turn help plants grow and keep the cycle going. So remember, food chains is a cycle of a flow of energy. So here's another quick example. So obviously all energy comes from the sun and then the producers, this grass is able to make its own energy. The grasshopper eats the grass. The snake eats the grasshopper. The hawk eats the snake. 
And then they're all broken down by decomposers like fungi, and then which provide nutrients back to grass. And then the cycle goes over and over and over. That's why there's life is able to be sustained on earth because energy is able to keep flowing and flowing and flowing, sustaining all different kinds of life. Okay, so try another one for yourself. So try to think in what order does the energy flow? Try to think, what's the producer? So which one can produce its own energy? Which one is the primary consumer? Which one of these animals and plants do you think eat the producer? And then what's the secondary consumer, which is what eats the primary consumer? And then what's the tertiary consumer? And remember, the tertiary consumer eats the secondary consumer. So take some time, pause the video if you need to, and try to think through these answers. Okay. And the answer is, is that the flow of energy goes from the sun to the grass, to the mouse, which eats the grass, to the snake, which eats the mouse, and to the hawk, and then they're all decomposed by the mushrooms, which bring nutrients back to grass. So the grass is the producer, the mouse is the primary consumer because it eats the producer, the snake is a secondary consumer because it eats the primary consumer, and then the hawk is the tertiary, and then the mushrooms are the decomposers. So pretty easy stuff, right? So now we're gonna go to a little more complex things. So this is really, so food chains are very simplified. It's very straightforward. It's only one line or one circle, right? But in real life, in, um, in real nature, uh, things are a lot more complicated than that. And that's where we go into food webs. So what are food webs? So food webs are basically the same concept as food chains in that it's a flow of energy. But food webs show the flow of energy between living organisms but food webs are different from food chains because food webs have multiple paths. So basically, food webs are just a bunch of different food chains that are mashed up together. <clears throat> so here's an example. Can you spot the different food chains within the food web? Remember, food webs are just a bunch of food chains combined together. So I can see one food chain right here. It goes from the sun, the plant, the grasshopper, to the hawk, and then to the owl. Um, or another food chain is the plants to the grasshopper, to the spider, to the shrew, to the weasel, to the owl. So as you can see, there's a bunch of different food chains in this food web. So here's a quick activity that if you have some friends or some siblings or you can do with your family. Um, as a group, you can uh, try to think of an example of a food chain for your ecosystem and maybe do a little skit to demonstrate that food chain. Okay, so just a quick summary of what you learned today. You learned about what are food chains, which is a cycle of flow of energy through plants, animals, fungi, bacteria, and all living things. And then you learned about producers, primary consumers, secondary consumers, and decomposers. Remember, producers is what gets its energy from the sun and produces its own energy. And then primary consumers, it's what eats the producer. And then secondary consumer is what eats the primary consumer. And then decomposer is what breaks down the dead organisms. And so can there be more than primary and secondary consumers? Yes, there can be tertiary, quaternary, um, quinary consumers, and more and more and more. And in real life, things can go on and on and on. And things are very complex and uh, really amazing to, and interesting to learn about. And what are food webs? Um, how are they different from food chains? So the flow of energy through multiple food chains, that's what a food web is. It's multiple food chains. So it's the same concept as food chains with the flow of energy, but they have multiple paths, while food chains only have one. Okay. So in the next main lesson this Sunday, we will learn about conservation and what's going on in ecology today. And a little hint, sneak peek at what the lesson is about. Um, let me just say it has to do a little bit with Nemo. Okay, thanks for your time today. I hope you learned a little something. Hope you had a little fun. And most importantly, I hope that you found these things interesting and that you're inspired to learn more about science and the amazing world around you. Thank you.